Professor Dave and Chegg here. We are familiar with carbonyl containing functional groups such as aldehydes and ketones, but how do we name these according to IUPAC rules? Let's learn a bit more nomenclature now. As we recall, a carbonyl is simply a carbon atom with a double bond to an oxygen atom. The oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs, so it's all set, but the carbon atom will need two more bonds. Depending on what sits on either side of this carbon atom, we can get a variety of different functional groups. First, let's start with the aldehyde. As we know, this involves at least one hydrogen to one side of the carbonyl. Typically, there will be alkyl on the other side, but having hydrogens on both sides will also result in an aldehyde, commonly referred to as formaldehyde. But assuming we have alkyl to one side, we simply use a prefix that specifies the number of carbons in the molecule, and then use the suffix al for aldehyde. So this would be ethanal. This is propanal. This is butanal. If there are substituents present, we will always label the carbonyl carbon as carbon-1, and then move along the chain from there. So this would be 3-chlorobutanal. The parent chain must contain the aldehyde, so even if there is a longer chain possible, the longest chain containing the aldehyde must be the parent chain. So this is 2-ethyl-4-methyl-pentanal, even though there is a 6-carbon chain present. There are also cyclic aldehydes, where the aldehyde is directly attached to the ring, and here we use the suffix carbaldehyde. So this is cyclohexane carbaldehyde, and 2-naphthalene carbaldehyde. If two aldehyde groups are present, we can specify the number of carbons in the molecule and use the suffix dial, since the carbonyls must necessarily be on the two ends of the molecule. So this is butane dial. This is pentane dial. Next, let's look at a functional group that is extremely similar to the aldehyde. If instead of having alkyl on one side of the carbonyl, we have alkyl on both sides of the carbonyl, this will be called a ketone. As one might guess, the corresponding suffix will be own for ketone. Here, the carbonyl will be internal to some carbon chain, so we will have to specify its location, and we will number the chain so as to have the carbonyl occurring soonest. Here is a 5-carbon ketone with a carbonyl on the second carbon from the left. So this is 2-pentanone. This is 4-octanone. This is cyclohexanone. Sometimes we will use a common name, like for propanone, which is also known as acetone. Other common examples include acetophenone and benzophenone. If there are two ketone functional groups, it's a dione, and we must list where they occur on the parent chain, such as with 2,4-hexane dione. Note that in this case, we spell out hexane in its entirety. Lastly, sometimes a double-bonded oxygen can be considered a substituent when there is a higher priority functional group present, like this example with both a ketone and an aldehyde. Here we refer to the ketone oxygen as oxo, so we get 3-oxo-hexanal. And with that, we know how to name aldehydes and ketones according to the rules of IUPAC nomenclature. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.